this okay? I see a green light. I think that means we're live on Facebook. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Monday's edition of the Catalyst Sessions. I'm Bill DeYoung from the St. Pete Catalyst, and we're here trying to keep our arts community connected through the current crisis. Dr. Alex Harris is the co-founder and CEO of the Arts Conservatory for Teens, which since its inception in 2012 has helped to change the lives of more than 2,500 middle and high school students in the Bay Area. It's an utterly unique arts-based after-school program that provides the tools for self-improvement, leadership development, arts and cultural enrichment, especially for underserved and at-risk youth. And that's something we'll get to a little, a little bit later on, but right now you're gonna hear Dr. Alex Harris saying, which is something else he excels at. Hey, Alex, how you doing? I'm doing great, how are you? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right here. We're looking forward to hearing you sing again, man. Yeah? Oh, Take it away. I'm just a wordless song When you're not around There is no sound You are Melody Rhythm of my heartbeat there is no you, girl. I'm just not me. So don't make me wait too long. Because I need words to my song. All I got is na, 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 na. Na, 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 oh, to understand what it's about is emptiness you feel when you're without, cause love has no meaning, no, 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 if you're not here with me. And I think about you all night long. To you, my heart belongs. So please don't make me wait too long. I need words to my song. All I got is na 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 na. All I got is na na. Oh. Na 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 oh I'm just a wordless song without you. Oh man. The first time I met you, I remember one of the first things I ever said to you, first thing in my mouth was, where did you learn to sing like that? My God. Those Al Green octave jumps that you're doing there, you're just killing me. I mean, oh, oh man. Alex, you're a pastor's son from central Georgia. South Central Georgia, what did we say? Around Atlanta somewhere? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. One of eight kids. And before you were even a teenager, you're part of a successful touring boy band with five of your brothers and a god brother. The right. sing Here's the thing. The group's called A7 right. because each of your names begins with the letter A. There's right. six of you. I know the answer, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Why wasn't it called A6? Because the seventh represented the presence of God. Uh, yeah. Hebrew seven is completion. And so uh, we felt that as a group, we were uh, complete when we acknowledged the presence of God. So uh, we, we this, the other part of the story is we were once known as a boys. Uh, but as we grew older, we were like boys. Hey. And that, we played, you know. Boys. It's like boys to men. Here we are. Yeah. Uh, so, we, we play around with that, but we wanted something that has a little bit more meaning other than our, uh, had an added meaning other than our names begin with an A. I mean, it's Alex, Antipas, Andronicus, uh, Alonzo, Arceus, and Antonio, our god brother. And yeah. so we, uh, we traveled all over uh, doing a lot of uh, music and singing for a lot of people, working to inspire people uh, through music. 
Well, you, you, I know your parents instilled in you the importance of, you know, family and education and faith. And, and one, of the, one of the amazing things about that group was that I remember reading there were 20 college degrees between the six of you. you. You have a master's in social work and a master's in theology, which is why we call you doctor, right. appropriately enough. So I've always wondered, I mean, were your concerts, were they pure entertainment? Were they like stay in school pep talks or were they Christian ministry? You know, um, it, it was, um, we, we grew up basically homeschooled. Uh, parents are educators and as five boys and three girls. And of course our yeah. brother also went to the school. And, and the idea was that God education equals success in our family. And uh, the acknowledgement or having some spirituality or a faith-based uh, connection uh, is very meaningful uh, mm -hmm. to our environment in which we grew up. And it really, we, we definitely acknowledge and accredit our success to our connection spiritually, as well as pursuing uh, I think I like to say, you know, everyone doesn't have to go to uh, an institution where education is taught um, to get a, a degree or diploma to be a quote unquote successful. Um, but for us, I, I do believe and in our family, I think uh, really challenging the mind and through uh, various in an in a organized institution uh, where the, the knowledge was provided was our, our way of doing it. And it has served uh, us very well. Uh, and uh, we're very humbled for the successes that we've accomplished academically, spiritually, socially, and professionally. You all grew up to be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty good guys. Uh, Joe, do we have the photograph there? I, I'm not sure we had a, I brought a photograph in. Um, sometimes they come up and sometimes they don't. So we'll just sit here for a minute. But uh, tell me about, if, if I may, tell me about, uh, you have one of your brothers, I think, lives in, the, is he an attorney? Yeah, yeah, My memory's a little soft on this, but you have a brother in, in, the, in the area. Yeah, yep. Uh, Norman Andronicus uh, Harris is the, uh, is the attorney. That's, that's definitely A7. Yeah. <laughs> is that you in the middle? That's me in the middle, yeah, with the right there I where's mean, where's norman the attorney he's on the right hand side he's standing up uh, uh, on my left shoulder but uh, oh yeah so why don't you tell us who everybody else is in this picture this uh, this is so, i'm thinking this is around 2005 maybe yeah to my immediate left if you're if you beat from the viewer's perspective it'd be on the left the guy sitting down as our c is that's the uh youngest of mm -hmm. the brothers i'm in the middle and then behind him is our god brother Antonio, just to uh, the right from the rear, uh, from the viewer's view, uh, is uh, Antipas standing up with the sweater, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, just seated next to him is Alonzo, and then next to Alonzo is Norman Andronicus. I have to say both of his names because a lot of people don't know his A name locally, but they yeah. know him by. <laughs> so like his clients maybe don't know about this secret that he was a once a, a very nearly nearly very famous singer <laughs> <laughs> don't walk away is a great song listen man i was listening to don't walk away before we came on here today and think it it, it does remind me of boys to men but it's it's like a perfect record it's really cool it got a lot of it went to uh got in the top 20 on the billboard it won us an award for our best uh for the Choice Awards mm -hmm. and for Best Song. And uh, we traveled literally all over these United States and Canada and in South uh, Asia, South Korea, um, islands. We did a lot of, uh, the record took us a lot of places. And, and then when I started Pursue Solo, it definitely for a lot mm -hmm. of, I maintained the relationship. I'm a person that really believes in uh, maintaining the relationships um, that I was able to formulate and um, I think we all do that in our own way, but um, I, I really definitely was a blessing to travel and see the world. Um, a lot of people from a small town like us, Manchester would not have gotten that opportunity. Still, yeah. Uh, and did not get that opportunity, but we were very blessed and fortunate coming from a large family and uh, utilizing our music to do that. But you, um, 
as you say, you pursued a solo career. But let's talk about how you ended up in Tampa Bay and how you, you co-founded ACT, the, the Arts Conservatory for Teens. You saw a need. Let me see if I can fill that. I mean, to me, that that's like, you know, it's a, you know, it's it's a wonderful philanthropic, you know, selfless thing. But you're also trying to be a like a, a pop singer at the same time. Why why did it happen? Tell, let's put it that way. I was trying to give you the short version. So um, when the brothers were traveling, I remember specifically been in Carolina, and I had this idea. I've always had this idea, and I with the brothers, uh, I would always develop choirs. You know, teenagers and college students. And we would, uh, I would kind of lead that. So I always been engaged mm -hmm. in trying to uh, bring people together from different backgrounds and utilize the arts to do that. So fast forward, I was, we were traveling one summer and I was in Carolina and I remember sitting outside the uh, Raleigh, North Carolina Convention Center and I had this idea of having, uh, I started with the idea to have a summer camp where we would have a lot of folks, uh, students our age and younger who would come and we would have professionals to help them, help them with their uh, skill set and development. Uh, some of the things that we had um, learned going to different workshops and seminars, our parents put us in from some of the major record companies, et cetera. So we learned a lot about the business. We learned and met a lot of cool people that we looked up to as well from them. Uh, we learned from them. And so I wanted to create an environment that would be conducive for that same thing in a community. Uh, so fast forward again, uh, I, after graduating from Boston University, my graduate studies, I did, as you aforementioned uh, there, was WMTS. Yeah. I really want to become the traditional counselor or use my education in a traditional way. I want to integrate in the creative space. And yeah. so I, um, after being in Boston, I loved Boston and had a great time and I love Massachusetts, but I wanted to come to the tropical area. And I'm not, <laughs> I, had, I, had, I was doing a lot of work down in uh, South Florida and uh, so I end up uh, here. My brother Norman uh, was in, uh, had finished his law degree, and his buddy was starting a firm. He said, and so Norman said, You should come and live in Tampa as opposed to living in, in South Florida, where I was doing a lot of work. As or going back to the snow in Massachusetts, yeah. right? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Cool. So when I got here, then I, I, I met, uh, I end up meeting a gentleman by the name of Carl Lavender. I think he was on um, Catalyst, not long ago, from Foundation for Healthy St. Pete. At the time, he was a president mm -hmm. of the Girls Club of the Sun Coast, and they were just launching uh, an arts uh, at the Royal Theater on the 22nd Street. Oh, yeah. Arts, yeah. arts program. And there I met my uh, business partner, Herbert Murphy, who uh, I was working as an artist in residence, one of the first. There, either did an article on me and all that kind of cool stuff. And I just had ideas. And so I was still traveling. I was doing a lot of work in New York, um, but I was doing more creative consulting. Um, and what that meant for me, something uh, I haven't seen that coin. So I'm, it probably has been used. I just didn't see it before. But um, in my mind, I coined it. <laughs> and I worked okay. at executive, um, yeah, uh, yeah. At executive levels to help them develop creative methods to accomplish their missions. And so I worked with some really uh, major uh, brands in New York and, and in South Florida, et cetera, and doing that. Um, but one of the things I started to do here in the St. Petersburg area is to uh, work on what I had the vision of doing in Carolina, and that was youth development programming. Mm -hmm. And so we started, and uh, I say we, that's me and Herbert, he was already there at the Royal, and then I started to pilot this uh, curriculum that I had developed when I was in Boston. And it was all about uh, personal formation for uh, social transformation. So how can I, uh, personal formation is a theological term, but it really focused for me, I borrowed that terminology to apply it to from a more of a sociological perspective as it related to youth development. I wanted them to be able to connect the dots internally to bring about a, a transformation that that in turn, at the end of the day, if each transform her or his way of thinking about uh, her himself, then mm -hmm. individuals will be able to bring about social transformation in their community. How do you do that through the arts? How does that work? I mean, so we use the arts. Yeah. Then. So we use the arts, something that they were able to connect with. Some students are able to connect in sports. Others are, are more uh, connected or inclined to the creative space. So whether it's visual arts, sketching, painting, 
um, or using their creative uh, thought processes and game coding, something that we started to offer later for students who were interested in sports but were not interested in dancing or acting or singing mm -hmm. or photography. So um, it, it really, uh, the inspiration, that's our tagline, what inspires you, the inspiration behind this integration of uh, I was able to do with the curriculum has to do what our upbringing was. We were fully into the arts. My first drum set I built myself were the buckets. Some people have heard me tell the story from my neighbor's backyard with the pine tree branches. Yeah, um, I've heard the story. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the moment of attorney, you know, the, the, the string, taking the, coll the uh, rubber band from the collard greens and making his first guitar, building up a <laughs> cage uh, from the little, the four little cement blocks that you see in the backyards of places to build the old houses. So we had a few of those back there and uh, that was thrown around and we would take them and build our own stage. And later we started rallies and we learned how to, you know, build the stages with professional companies. So I wanted to bring that experience that we had uh, from, yeah. a, from a rural little town that you know, transformed our lives and we were able to pour in to many communities throughout the country and abroad through our music. So hoping that by creating something, uh, a curriculum that will create a clear pathway for these students to pursue uh, their own discoveries, right? So sometimes there are discoveries that happen or people are inclined, especially in underserved or underprivileged communities, but they have the path or the resources that will lead them uh, in, to pursue their own discovery. So I was able to do that in a pilot for three years. And then in 2012, we officially launched the, uh, launched the Arts Conservatory for Teens as we know it today. What's, what's the success rate like? I, you know, I, I quoted some numbers a while ago, but I, you've had a pretty good graduation rate. Yes, every yeah. challenge. There are a couple of things. The first thing uh, when we started this pilot was uh, to, to provide this environment that was conducive for positive development around the arts, right? Um, yeah. To do students to careers that uh, they may have been interested in the art form, but didn't know they can have a career. Three, you know, um, by doing that at such early age, we wanted to allow what we were doing to become also uh, a coping mechanism through whatever challenges or circumstances they were right. to ensure that they graduate and don't become another statistic right, of school dropout. One of the yeah. things, um, you know, throughout the nation we face is attrition. So we wanted to end that, right? And so I told Herbert Murphy, I said, one thing I want to push is something I've been very fortunate to obtain, and that is education. I want to make sure, first, they at least graduate from high school, and two, that if they want to pursue higher education, they have that. With that focus, we have to date still obtained 100% of our students who come to us and in high school, they graduate with a diploma. We make sure that there are not any students dropping out or not going to class. We've been first and that for, for the, uh, since our uh, pilot phase to our uh, startup phase in 2012. Was the, the Pinellas County school system, uh, you know, receptive to this idea? And they, I imagine they think you're, you're, you know, you're pretty much a hero these days for the, that kind of well, turning out good people. Well, we do love uh, Dr. Draco and Laurie Matway and all the Dr. Brim. We work with her and various principals at the middle school and the high school level. Yeah. And some of our students, I would like to just highlight uh, from the first cohort to even now. Hang on a second. Forget it's, forget it's live. I forgot to turn my phone off. Sorry. sorry I'm sorry. You were saying. <laughs> no, even our, our, our former students, I mean, their success stories, I think, is a testament to what happens when a community comes together, they see the opportunity and, uh, and, and share as people help us excel. Mm -hmm. I, um, we see students now, probably in fact, of course, all the shows are canceled. However, uh, we have students who toured the world for Broadway uh, musicals such as Aladdin. Uh, we have students who've done Hamilton and Lion King. We have students dance with the Houston Ballets. Students who work with uh, work from BET Studios to co-producing uh, major television shows. That's got to feel good. Yeah. I got a student who's going to be on Good Morning America soon. Um, she, I mean, the stories just are endless. Then we have students who are still living local, who are doing things in, in our local community. They're positive. They're entrepreneurs. They're successful. They have their own businesses. They've gone and pursued. They've gone to SPC. They've gone to USF. Um, then we have students who've gone to Carnegie Mellon. We have students who've gone uh, to Georgia State and Bethune Cookman and Clark Atlanta and, and uh, Audubon University. So it's, it's just, it's very rewarding and the list goes on. 
Berkeley College of Music. It was very rewarding to see, rewarding to see uh, that for me, not so much about look what I've done and say, look what the community has done. You know, you can have a great idea, right? Yeah. You don't have a community to come together uh, to help uh, that idea become uh, like, give life to the idea, become, make it for, bring fruition to it, uh, to reality, then it's, it's just an idea, right? Yeah. Um, uh, but I'm, I'm a believer to something you asked earlier uh, that it's not about getting to a place uh, and then, you know, uh, saying, let me see what I can do. Like, I don't, I think that you can give along the way, right? I think you can help along the way. You know, I get a little bit, I, I, I make a step and I'm able to continue to, if I, as I receive, I'm able to give. And I think the reciprocal thing, and that's how we receive the community continue to grow in a more healthy way um, as opposed to uh, just take all of I can get and then whatever I have left over, I give to you. <laughs> you are, you're an inspiration. What, tell, tell us what the website is for the Arts Conservatory for Teens. What's the website? The Arts Conservatory for Teens is just what it says, artsconservatoryforteens.org. And okay. uh, we've done a major transition because we can't be in person. Um, so we have act online. Um, so oh, yeah. Students, yeah, we have a lot of students who gather every week for the last two weeks. Um, we just started two weeks ago. This is our third week um, where students now are, are after school at 30 to 4 and 4.30 uh, to 5.30. Um, we launched our global learning initiative. And what that is, is that we have uh, professionals from all over the country um, and, and abroad who will co come online and do master classes and share their journey, um, do uh, Q and A's with the students and they just absolutely are loving that. But we're offering every class online right now. We want it to be 21st century forward to stay engaged. Uh, we heard the sad news of the 15 year old in LA who committed suicide. She couldn't take the quarantine. And um, so we, we mm -hmm. unfortunately, if we don't intervene and provide uh, this, this positive environment of hope and healing, um, I think that we unfortunately will, will see those kind of things happen. So we are doing what we can do uh, with our partners. We're still inviting more people to, to join in. I mean, this was one of our biggest fundraising seasons and everything that we were planning had to cancel, but we said, let's see what we can do with the little resources we have to continue to provide and, and let other folks know it. So if they want to join and, and support still, uh, that will be very, very helpful. But it's very important for me, uh, as I said, that even during this time, to continue to find a way to provide hope and healing through what we have to offer, whether I'm doing a stream online performance or whether I'm talking or on a committee. I joined the, um, the Pinellas Re of Arts Relief Committee. Uh, we are raising Did money you? Yeah. for us. Um, yeah. but, but for all the artists, I, I, was, I said, is everybody, we have to come together uh, as a community and yeah. uh, people can support that as well. So I, I'm here, a huge community supporter and uh, I do this everywhere, I go all over the world and I continue to do it, especially in my, in my own community. Well, it's arts community, arts, not community. You got community in the brain. Arts, Conserva arts conservatory for teens.com. You say the whole thing. Dot org. Dot org. Yeah, arts Back up, artsconservatory14s.org. You have your own website as Alex an artist. Official. Okay. Alexharrisofficial.com. Alex Harris Official. You got the, these websites now. I'm never going to memorize all of this. Yeah. But th I want to make this my, my last question before we, before we have to say goodnight tonight. But you kind of still actively pursue a solo career. You're still making records, as oh. they say. The EP coming out, uh, uh, which EP is an extended play, it'll be five yeah. songs. Um, like four, four or five tunes? Yeah, five. Um, five, it's, yeah. It's coming out in a few weeks. I did a deal with the Orchard, uh, well, it's cross the line uh, music, but it's, it's via Orchard and Sony Music. So um, we are working with that whole team uh, to, to ensure that the music comes out. I'm really, really excited. Uh, we're gonna be doing promotions all summer. Uh, of course, mostly digitally. <laughs> and in the fall, yeah. we'll be doing a lot of in-person shows and we got a lot of things uh, that are that are in, in, in queue, I should say, because it's, yeah. it's hard to say where, where the end of the queue is. A lot of the plan is, but we got it in queue. We have 
I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm staying uh, at home. <laughs> yeah, that's part of my plan too. Dr. Harris, you have a day job. How are you going to do all that stuff? Hey, man. So, uh, we, well, you know, we have a great team. So I, I uh, consider myself a visionary, and I, we provided a lot of jobs for, for artists, especially uh, those who are actors and, and uh, in the visual art space and in the uh, music and video. We provide jobs, and we've done that for a long time and, and uh, been able to continue to be a constant for them. So we hire some of the best talent. Um, they are qualified. They um, not only uh, with a, as a professional with all their resumes, um, yeah. all their backgrounds. We do all that kind of stuff. We do trainings, orientations. So it's a very sophisticated, high quality uh, programming uh, that I wouldn't have it any other way. And I don't think the community would want to have it any other way because we are a very classy, artsy uh, community, and I love it. So it's artsconservatoryfortings.org. Got that right? It's also alexharrisofficial.com. Yes. Which is where your, your EP will drop there or will it go through it's the usual to, channels? It's there, but it's going to be on all my social media platforms, including Facebook, including oh, yeah. um, Spotify. You can join my Spotify now. I encourage everybody to go to my Spotify and join the community. Um, it's, it's a great community to be a part of. Lots of your favorite music. And um, all that means something uh, because the more that we're able to engage on a national platform, the more that we can do for these communities and these, and these students that, we, that we're working with to inspire. Always a pleasure to talk to you. I was gonna ask if you'd take us out with another song, if okay. you wouldn't mind, could Very I ask? I, I wanna tell everyone, uh, again, thanks for joining us and thanks to uh, Alex Harris for being here, Dr. Alex Harris, who is uh, one of the most impressive people I know. Tomorrow night on the Catalyst Sessions, mm -hmm. it's uh, Michael Francis from the Florida Orchestra. So we are trying to keep the arts community together. So Alex, man, thank you so much. Take us out. All right, here's a, here's a song, one of my favorites. When the night is calm, oh na na na, and the land is dark, and the moon is the only light we'll see. No, I won't be afraid. No, I won't be afraid. Just as long as you stand, stand by me. So, darling, won't you stand by me? Oh, na na na, won't you stand by me? Please stand by me. Stand by me, oh yeah. Now, when the sky uh, we look upon, oh na na na, should crumble and fall, and the mountain should crumble oh, to the sea, uh, I won't cry. I won't cry. No. no. Shed a tear just as long as you stand. Oh, come on and stand by me. So, darling, won't you stand by me? Please stand by me. Yeah, oh, stand, oh, stand, stand by me. That's so good. Alex, thank you and good night. Good night. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, Bill.